So for almost eight years, I worked in quality assurance in a factory at Volkswagen. And one of the things I learned during that time was the importance of processes and techniques. And the culture around us spends a lot of time talking about which car you should buy, which sleeping bag you should buy, and all that, um, which one's better. But they don't spend that much time talking about how to use those things effectively. And that's what this video is about. I'm just going to give you like 10 examples of how we bought something and there was a learning curve to use it well. And um, what I would encourage you is to not necessarily buy a particular item, but whatever item you do buy to look at it from a certain perspective of what's the best way to use this, the most efficient, safe way to use this. And am I using it uh, the, as well as I could or might I modify that? So let me just give you a couple examples. Okay, um, first one. So you may have heard me say that at night we listen to white noise to help the children sleep and so they don't hear noises and car doors and things like that. So we have the speaker. The speaker's battery doesn't last throughout the night. So, simple solution, we have a battery pack. Well, what happens with this battery pack is this battery pack will charge this until it's at 100%, and then when this is at 100%, this will turn off. And if that happens too early in the night, then by morning, this will be down to zero, and it'll turn off. And when it turns off, it makes a noise, like an off noise, and that off noise wakes up the kids. <laughs> so... The solution was I put this near my head and as I toss and turn throughout the night several times, I'll just reach over and push this button, which restarts the initiation of the charging process. Simple example. Okay, second example. So this is the stove that we boil our coffee in. Um, when your water is boiling and you lift this up, the stove is down there and you can blow it out. But if it's not on a picnic table and it's sitting outside the tent like it normally is in the dirt, as you blow, you blow tons of dust and sometimes sticks and debris up on top of that and contaminate the surface. So uh, a better technique is you pour your water out, then you put this back in, then you tilt this like that so you can move the whole thing away, and then you use the lid to snuff it out. Another example, this is inside the Trangia. So very often, basically every meal, the Trangia has to be refilled with fuel. So you take this thing, you pick it up, you put this to the side. Now, what they expect you to do is wait for the whole thing to cool down. Then you rotate this, pull this off, then you refill with fuel, then you put it back on. But that takes quite a bit of time. So instead, we use these bottles and we just dump it in like this well the first time we did that i spilled a little bit around here i figured who cares no big deal then we lit it and this whole thing lit on fire and warped this perforated surface so lesson learned well that takes me to the next technique which is when you get these bottles you don't just take a knife and cut that thing out or put your finger in there you just make a very small tiny cut what that allows you to do is squeeze it and then as you release it it creates a vacuum which allows you to tip it upside down well, i didn't do it quite right that time because i was filming but it allows you to basically create a suction and as it's suctioning you can basically turn it upside down and it doesn't spill or it spills very little and that allows you to refill very quickly without disassembling anything and uh, waiting for it to cool down. Another example with these is last year we had, you know, we keep a bunch with us because we go through, uh, we go through one every like day and a half. We accidentally bought a few too many this past time, but last time we had like three or four that had gotten opened because we kept not knowing like, oh, is this the one we have open or not? So we just threw a rubber band around it to basically say, this is the open one. Another example you may have seen somewhere else, the frying pan. Uh, this thing is an absolute pain in the butt to clean up when it's filled with grease, especially in colder weather, when you're at a backcountry campsite and all there is is cold running water and there's signs that say, please don't wash dishes. So a simple piece of tin foil spread out inside catches 90% of the grease. It's absolutely wonderful. Next one, Stanley French Press. Love this thing. If you look, it says that the fill line is to there, which is nonsense. We're able to fill it basically all the way to the top and get 
like three or four more cups of coffee out of the thing. Another thing we learned, if you don't fold these handles back and you pour in boiling water and then you let it steep for six or seven minutes like you're supposed to, then when it comes time to fold these out and pour, they're scalding hot and you have to wait. So you have to do that first. Next thing, the lid. The lid is supposed to go like this. Well, when you do it like that, if you pour too fast, it dribbles off the side and goes everywhere. If you pour slow, it doesn't touch this mouth at all, and it's exactly the same as if you were pouring without this lid. Interestingly enough, if you fill it all the way to the top like we do, when you go to pour the first little bit, it spills everywhere. But if you flip the lid around the other way with the vent hole at the front, it actually controls it quite nicely. You can completely pour spill-free works great so basically you you overfill this thing and you use the lid backward or not at all all right last couple things uh inflatable pillow the same is true for our inflatable mattress you get these things and you assume i want to fill it up all the way to the top well when you fill it up all the way it's quite firm then you experiment and you find out actually if i let some air out it's a lot more comfortable so it took me like 20 times of using it before i ever thought about it it's way more comfortable if you let it not be totally full. We found the same thing is true with the mattress. The mattress is way more comfortable if you don't fill it up all the way. Then, in the middle of the night, when my wife turned over or I turned over, we found that it created like this blob effect where the other, you know, one person moves and then it kind of shoots the other person up and wakes them up. So we went back to filling it up all the way. Another example, tent poles. Um, you can fold these up basically twice as fast if instead of folding each section at a time, you fold the whole thing in half and then half again and half again because that way every time you pull a section out, you're actually pulling two sections out at the same time. So you get twice as fast. This is actually, there are three orange poles in this tent, two main poles which are identical in this pole for the vestibule. So I spray painted this one green because they're all sitting in the same area and when you pull half the time when you pull this one out you find out that you've grabbed the wrong one so by marking it green as the unique one uh i can immediately tell from the end oh that's not the one i need i need the maid pole speaking of color coding we have three children they peter's favorite color is green paul's is blue becca's is red or in this case purple so things that are identical you can color code them and that discourages fighting among like that's my chair or no i already folded up my chair that one's yours um those sorts of things and the last thing which is more of a process than a technique is um like th these are the kids pjs and instead of leaving them in the clothes box in the car and always having to take them back and forth we we just stuff them at the end of the sleeping bags that they sleep in so that when they go into the tent at night and they get ready to go to bed, they have their sleeping bags with them and their pajamas are at the foot. Last thing I forgot was another thing. Um, so if you get a stove like this, you know you need alcohol. The question is, how much alcohol do you need? Do you need one of these a day, five of these a day? So these are, in my mind, a collection of all the things that you want to know and need to learn about your equipment that go beyond just buying it from the store. So. I would just encourage everyone put less effort into buying the perfect stove or the perfect tent or the perfect sleeping bag and spend more effort into getting to know the one you have, experimenting with it, taking a moment every once in a while to sit back and say, am I using this in the best way possible? Could I overinflate, underinflate, color code, rubber band? Could I do something to this to make it more organized and easier on my mind when I get to camp so that I'm not so flustered? The other thing, when it comes to boiling water and cooks or um, cooking and stoves and fire, it's legitimately a safety issue. Um, I've burned my hand on these, I've burned my hand on this, and um, boiling water around kids is no joke. So this isn't just some process engineer's take on camping. There are legitimate safeties out here. Um, and by having these processes in place, it can also help you relax because you kind of know where stuff is and know which stuff is which without all of the questioning and uncertainty of double checking. So that may not be for everyone, but for some of you, it may be helpful. Uh, I guess you could say it's a process engineer's look at camping. So hopefully it's helpful and have a good one.